Okay, so this is part three on why I think God would get a lot of glory if anybody ever made a movie about Gene Sullivan. Because his life is all about signs, wonders, and miracles, and God's glory. And he knows who all the glory belongs to. So I went to go, the last one I'm, I'm talking about, how I went to go sing for him, and he heard the voice of God. The only reason I met him, actually, too, because I'd seen him on TV, I'd even seen him in a restaurant a couple times, very conflicted in my soul looking at him. He looked like a movie star in a really unclean town, and he was reading a Bible in a restaurant. I thought, man, I wonder what kind of women get to marry a man like that. He must be a good Mormon or something. And he looked like Elvis Presley. He looked like a movie star, right? <laughs> so, But I was with the parents of the serial murder and rapist, Michael. So saw him again the next day. And again, I'd gone through so much bad Christian doctrine that I just, they started talking to him, the parents. And, and I just was, oh my gosh, there's another guy with the Bible. I, I was so overcome in my soul because of so much bad counseling down the road with the serial murder and rapist with all the priests and pastors that knew what he'd done and nobody ever told, told him to turn himself in so i was i kind of mocked him again and scorned him like i did on tv even though i got goosebumps but four months later i'm hiding out in my apartment fearful, unbelieving, totally vexed and tormented, coming to the end of my own pride because the serial murder's face is on the news every night and on the paper every day for a year. I just wanted to crawl into a hole and die and or burn my house down with my kids in it because I had too much psychology and thinking that they'd ever be okay. So I heard the voice of the Lord say to me at one point though that, you know, you need to get out of this. We're made to love, be, be loved and give our love away. And you, you can't live like this. It's going to ruin your kids. So I went, I, I heard the Christian radio about a concert. So I decided to go to the concert. I didn't know any, I didn't go to Christian concerts. I didn't know the guy, Dallas Holmes. And I didn't actually uh, make it a habit to go to Christian concerts. So, but I said, you know, Lord, I'm going to show you that I'm not going to live in fear and unbelief and I'm going to get off my rear end and I'm going to go to that concert. And I did. And guess who was there? Gene Sullivan. So the love story begins and a life of signs, wonders and miracles began <laughs> when he asked me to go out for coffee and left that restaurant saying, thank God I'm not married to a woman like that but asked me to go sing for an event. I was at the place where I was like the Spanish Inquisition. I didn't want to be deceived. I was reading my Bible all the time. I wanted to know the Lord myself, and I didn't want anybody else to be responsible for my Christianity. I was ready to own my own battle between the flesh and the spirit instead of just being a pew sitter looking for Jesus to do everything for me. Or the, or the church institutions to do everything for me. I started taking on personal responsibility to take a look at the logs in my eyes so I could see clearly so my children wouldn't be full of generational curses because I wanted to stick my head in the sand. So I was, I was kind of ready to hear the sound doctrine and wisdom that Jean had. And... Oh, so many alternate versions. That's really what I wanted to make this about because knowing him all these years and watching him pray in the spirit and pray with understanding. And, and even now, I mean, the Lord has done just incredible, miraculous things for 38 years. I knew him for a year before I married him. So we're going on 38 years now of a life full of signs, wonders and miracles and persecution that's what's really cool is actually knowing somebody that can suffer well even people close to him think this guy is a nothing burger that does nothing that has 50 60 people that travel with him through life a lot of people have been in and out of this ministry but there's still so much slander 
and accusation and evil imaginations from people that love the world and the things in the world that don't want to look at their sin, that don't want to take a look at the logs in their eyes, who love this present world. They might have come into a very anointed man's life, but they didn't actually want to care about the way they loved their children or the way they loved their wife or how they treated their brother. And because Jean's really deep on how do you say you love God or you don't see when you don't love your brother who you do see, I'd never been exposed to that in any of the therapy, any of the anonymous meetings, all the psychology I'd ever been involved in. I had never met a man that actually had knew how to do the play out of how to love your brother, how to keep your heart free of offense towards God and man how to be your brother's keeper because of putting away the pointing of the finger and loosing bands of wickedness because you got your own bands of wickedness loosed. Uh, I never knew anybody how to help people understand what they're getting saved from so they actually can be a witness and testify. So 38 years of watching him now, I've watched a lot of deep stuff go down. Even I was telling him about this kid because we have like an inner core ministry, but a huge outer core ministry that all the slanders think he still is a nobody that does nothing that doesn't make any difference in people's lives. <laughs> That's their slander. But they have no idea of all the phone calls he gets, all the other people that send us messages or letters or reach out to ever since I've known him. There's this whole outer ministry that he has that's not part of the core group that all the people that slander him just think he's a, a nobody doing nothing, right? But that, that's not true at all. <laughs> Even this, this one kid, he's been a huge fan of Gene Sullivan on social media ever since I went into social media. More recently, he's gotten a lot of recon, recognition and even has a pretty big radio show as a, he's a cage boxer or some kind of boxing. And you know, Gene probably, you know, could have very well been a boxer. So even when Gene went to bury Evil Knievel with, uh, you know, the Crystal Cathedral guy, I can't remember his name right now, but um, Evil Knievel ended up getting saved. That's a, just a great story in itself because Evil Knievel wanted nothing to do with Gene and even threw a shoe at the TV to break it when he... When he heard Gene on TV saying, I departed from evil on the 700 Club. So um, there was a definite war between them. And every time Gene tried to reach out to him, to talk to him about Jesus and salvation or pray for him, he just hung up on him like he did anybody that didn't make him happy. So um, I don't want to make this too much longer, but what's really cool, maybe I'll just end it because there's Gene has had so much influence in so many people's lives, and maybe it's just for a short time and space. So a, a lot of people that slander him and despise him don't have any idea how he's a messenger in a way to people that come in and out of our lives, that come in and out of his lives, even the influence on this kid's life. I was showing him the pictures of this, this kid who's probably a little older now, but he's become even more and more famous in this boxing thing that he's involved in. He's been a huge Gene Sullivan fan because I think he saw him on TV or something and and wanted to follow him. He's listened to all of his stuff. He's He uses in his sports field because he became a Christian. He's and Gene was one of the first people to ever actually do a stunt as a platform. After that, it started being happening all over the world. Even one of our friends in Europe is the strong man for South Africa. So we've had a great time with him, all kinds of people. We have times and spaces of, you know, being the hands and feet of Jesus in a good spirit there's a lot of ministry that goes on to the outside world in our realm of existence for just a short time and space with people that aren't called to walk with us or be with us. And, you know, it's just amazing how we, we hear all the ridiculous slander. I mean, even at one point, I mean, the, the slander has been incredible. But what's really cool about that is you can still keep your good spirit. And, the, and if you listen to people like Jim Caviezel talk about him and Mel Gibson and all the slander and, 
and all the persecution these guys have had to put up to try to do good, you know, people can fly above it. All things can work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And you know what? More and more people that have stayed with us over the year, years actually understand how to walk in the spirit and how to overcome the devil and how to be by their own good spirit instead of blaming God and people for their problems to be a good spirit and how to find gold in the trials of life so all things can work together for good to those that love the Lord. That's one of the deepest part of his ministry, the very operation of God, the very revelation of the spirit in conflict, in battles, in rough situations, getting the revelation of the spirit because you are spiritual and you're tapping into another dimension where the King of Kings and the Holy Ghost can talk to you. So I think I'm going to end this now, but man, would his life make a great movie? I hope at some point somebody picks it up. I've even thought about reaching out to ancestry because of the earning nevers factor. Anyway, God bless you. I hope this blesses somebody, even if it never goes anywhere, it's in God's hands. Amen.